on gang, Nikki at Bunnycraft Oxford here with another download me video and um, we're going to be lo losing, we're not going to be losing, we're going to be using some leftover dye today. Um, I had some leftover dye from another video um, which you may have seen already, you may have not, not sure. And then I realised I have a lot of just sort of little bits of dye that are in jars that I don't even know what they are this is really quite bright um that we probably need to use up at least some of so the leftover dye that I have is some hyacinth um at an unknown solution and a 45 0.45 percent um turquoise we have two skeins of DK Merino Nylon 80-10 in here, there is a um, teaspoon of citric acid and they've been all mixed up together and we're going to do some space dyeing. There's about six cups of water in here as well. So what I'm going to do is in the corner here I'm going to pour most of this blue. I'm going to hold some back. In the corner here, I'm going to pour most of this hyacinth. And I'm going to hold a little bit of it back. And then I have some dark navy, not navy, royal blue, which I'm going to pour in the corner here. Um, I have some weird ready pink stuff. I have no idea what this is. And I'm going to pour that in the corner here. And there's going to be, oh that's Cabernet. And that's a 1% Cabernet. So I'm just going to leave that at this. <laughs> some yellow. For the yellow I'm just going to streak across. I don't know what this is, so giving it a good shake, and I'm just going to streak across here. Okay, that's navy. I don't know what this is, some sort of orangey yellow. So we're going to go across here. Yeah, that's burnt orange mustard color. And then we're going to take the hyacinth that we reserved and streak it across here. Blue that we reserved, streak it across here. It wasn't all that much blue. To be fair, we have this. So let's pour some of this in a... That's very blue. There we go. And now, well, now I want to use the rest of this because there's no point. So I'm going to pour it down here. And I'm going to pour it down here. And down here. And God knows what's happening underneath, but uh, we're going to leave this and uh, how long do we leave it for? Let's leave it for, because we have that, let's leave it for 15 minutes. Let's get 15 minutes on the timer. Oh, that's two hours and 15 minutes. There we go. 15 minutes on the timer. And we're going to see what we get when we move the yarn around and see if we want to add some more of some of the other colours that we have left over. So, um, let's see what happens. Okay, so <laughs> these areas here have gone like a really deep green, which I'm absolutely loving. I kind of wish 
Well, I guess we have more of that ochre. Let me just put this down also. It's coffee time. Ha, okay. So, I'm going to put some gloves on because this is going to be tray warm. And I know that when you, actually before I do that, I still cut the colour here. It's got a lot of yellow here. A lot of hyacinth there. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat up. It's got a bit of acid in here, so um, and I'm going to leave this for another five minutes, maybe a bit more. We'll see. How long is this? Like this is absorbed. No, it hasn't. Ooh. Oh, no, it's a bit yarn. Okay. I don't know, I'm really tempted. Like, we have a lot of white still. But, um. Do you know what? I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to move this this way a little bit. I'm going to take this. I'm going to pour this in here. Pour a bit more of this around here and here. I'm going to put a bit more water in here. Close it up. Wrap it in a towel and give it a shake because otherwise you'll go everywhere. Because these are my leaky bottles. And we're going to add all of this over here. And then we'll wash all of these. We're going to leave this for half an hour. I'm then going to let it cool completely and I'm going to let it dry and you are going to see it. Well, I'll tell you what, once it's cooled completely, I'll take it out of the pan and I'll show you what it looks like wet and then we'll see it what it looks like dry as well. Ta-da! We have finished yarn. Um, I'll t let you know in the secret. Um, I dyed lots and lots and lots of yarn over the Easter holidays and filmed lots of videos and I've been doing using my lunch break to film all of the outros for them. This is the last one and I'm quite glad because I am so hungry. <laughs> I've been filming for the last 40 minutes and I just really want to eat. <laughs> so um, if I go through this a bit quickly, my apologies. So this is, these are the two skeins and they're both quite similar and quite different at the same time. They were twisted around each other and then twisted as well. I'm making a mess of the skeins. It's hard to show you um, in pan. This is the bit where I'm most angry about. This is the Cabernet and it mixed with the yellow and it mixed with all the rest of them and it's not just brown. Um, something broke here, I'm guessing some sort of navy or something. Um, luckily that's only on one of the big skeins and then this skein has got quite a lot of white left over underneath. I absolutely love the, I think this is a mix of the royal blue and the turquoise or something like that. I don't actually know what bit is what. Anything that's the yellow was in the centre of the pan. Anything that's the green, God knows, it could have been underneath. So we have some of that brown here. We have a little bit here on the yellows. I don't mind it on the yellow. With the yellow, I just kind of mind it with the green. It's not um, quite the same. I, sorry if you heard that, I have just um, got a text message that was quite important. Um, <laughs> I was trying so hard not to 
not on the camera. <laughs> I've done it for every single one of the outros that I have filmed today. And um, that's really annoyed me. Uh, so I think this is the highest synth that we had left over. And there's a little bit of, let me bring it up. There's sort of some speckling in it where there might have been some undissolved dye that I quite like. I really like this bit. It makes me think of um, one of the Formula One yarns that I had last year in the shop um, that I'm not dying anymore uh, because, you know, the car doesn't look like that anymore this season. Um, I love all of the different um, greens. We have some really bright sort of turquoisey aquas. We have some gorgeous forest greens we have that end up trans, you know turning into quite bright greens we have some wonderful teals as well um it, it's just there's so many colors um that i i yeah i'm quite pleased um i quite like the different blues that we've got left over i am surprised that we've got as much white because the colors are spreading quite seriously i i like this bit i like all of the pastels um as well i'm going to um quickly go off camera and twist these up for you so that you can see them twisted and i'll be right back right when you see it twisted like this the brand actually isn't that bad so i imagine that it's going to be this is what cabernet looks like when you actually have it um in when you mix it um and then it changes into that beautiful sort of purple purple um wine color when it hits the heat or the acid i'm not really sure i think it's the heat to be honest i think these dyes react to heat because it's very similar with the royal blue it's very very sort of gray blue and then when you pop it in the pot it just turns this beautiful vibrant blue um but yeah there's there's quite a few so if you look at it just like here this makes me think of um uh, a surf um and the sea and all the different sort of um sea colors so there's quite a lot of wonderful variations and i think if you're someone that dyes yarn whether you do it um, recreationally or um, you're a, just a general yarn dyer, when you have leftover dye, um, doing this sort of experiment can be really good fun. Um, I wouldn't do it with a specific project in mind, or I will do it with very small projects in mind. Um, they don't require each skein to be you know, the same or as close as possible, or projects where you want to marl them, um, you know, transition from one colour to the next, and you don't actually mind that there's going to be quite large colour color variations between the different skeins. You know, the, you wouldn't... You would say that they are sister skeins, but you would never say they are repeating, you know, it, that that's exactly the same colourway. They just have a lot of similarities. Um... So, yeah, that was our um, space dyeing in our kettle pan with some leftover dyes, which is always a lot of fun. Um, I was really worried that we we're going to end up with something really quite ugly um, because of the Cabernet, but I, I, I think it doesn't make enough of a difference and there isn't actually really that much, so it could just add quite a lot of interest. Um, I'm going to try and make sure that these yarns are up in the shop for anyone that might be interested to grab them they're both um dk and they are 80 80 20 merino nylon uh so yeah thank you for joining me for another video please don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you're new to subscribe um leave a comment below about what you think about the yarn how you're doing your new projects any videos you would like me to do anything like that i love hearing from all of you um if you want to support the channel further then the links to the shop is below along with the link to buy me a coffee um you can do either or, or you can do both i don't mind thank you again have a wonderful wonderful weekend love you all Bye-bye.